Alright, so now that our basic map has been created, I realize that I glossed over the different locations in the last episode, so I'd like to make sure that we all have the same ones. Uh, first of all, we start in the crypt. We then move to the outside of the crypt. Above that is a fountain. Next to that are some graves. Below that is the cemetery gate. Below that is the gravekeeper's cottage. To the west of that is a bench. Then a hill to the west of that. North of the hill is a pathway, north of the pathway is the grave digger himself, and we're going to have the story be that when the player exits the crypt, they will then have to go to the grave site. There they will find a shovel. They will be able to use the shovel to knock out the grave digger, who happens to have a key on him. They will open his cottage, and inside the cottage there will be a switch that opens the gate and the player can exit. Obviously, we will be adding all of the item collection mechanics later. Right now, we should probably focus more on fleshing out the world and describing things a little bit better for the player. So we're going to start inside of the crypt here. And I want this inside a crypt to be the title. So we're going to hit return. And below that, I'm going to copy and paste some text. It says, you awaken on a cold slab of stone. Moonlight dimly illuminates the room. You can barely see your surroundings. And then, of course, is the link to the outside. Now, that's kind of jarring. We can be even more descriptive with this word if we want as well. We could actually say, go outside the crypt. And all of that inside of these brackets would still link to the outside passage. It would, of course, change that name to be anything inside the brackets, meaning that if we went out here, this would then be called go outside the crypt. And that would be a little cumbersome. So instead, we could actually just incorporate this link into a line of text itself. We could actually say, go outside the crypt. And if we test this real quick, we will see now that the word is highlighted inside of here, and we click that, and it takes us outside the crypt. And that works well enough, but there's one more thing that we can actually do to these links that allows us to have a sentence be a link but also keep the actual passage name nice and short. So I'm actually going to delete all of this text. And instead, what I'm going to do is say, you quickly find the door. And, and so now what I'm going to do is finish the sentence inside the bracket, exit the crypt, and between exit the crypt and outside, I'm going to put a pipe character. And this is the character right above the enter key. If you use the shift backslash, it creates this pipe. Uh, you can also use dash forward arrow, and this will get the same effect, but I prefer using the pipe. And it's also important to make sure that there are no spaces here. And now what this does is everything before the pipe is just rendered as text, and the passage name outside after the pipe becomes hidden but is still used as the link. So let's go ahead and close this, and then hit play, and you can see you quickly find the door, exit the crypt, click on this, and now it takes you to outside the crypt. So this allows you to be a little bit more descriptive in your links, and in fact to differentiate this even more I'm going to separate that on a different line and I will add a period to the end of that sentence. And now this is something that I want to do with my other links. If we open outside the crypt here, we could simply say, to the north you see a, and then leave fountain, like this. But for my preferences, I would rather have the link be the direction that the player can go. So instead I'm going to delete this, copy and paste, you see a fountain to the, and then inside the link brackets here I'm going to say, north, and then put a pipe between north and fountain. And then I'm going to quickly add all the descriptions to the others. It will say the cemetery gate is to the east, an old bench lies to the south, and a path runs to the west. And then of course I want to add punctuation to all of that. And while I'm here I may as well also add a little bit of a description. So I will paste in, you're outside of a crypt, in the middle of a cemetery, you cannot open the door, because we do not want the player going back into the crypt. Of course, you could change this for your game, you could put something in the crypt that the player will later need to get, but for right now, this will do.
So let's go ahead, close this, run this one more time. We see here you are inside a crypt, you awaken on a cold slab of stone, moonlight dimly illuminates the room, you can barely see your surroundings, you quickly find the door, exit the crypt. Outside the crypt, you are outside a crypt in the middle of a cemetery, you cannot open the door, you see a fountain to the north, a cemetery gate to the east, an old bench lies to the south, and a path runs to the west. And then of course if we go to any of those we can go around. So basically that is the same concept I'm going to use to fill in the descriptions for all of the various passages, so I'll be back when that is finished. All right, that took a while. Be sure when you're doing these things to make sure you do not break your links. I made that mistake. So let's go through each one of the different passages now, just so that you can see what I've done. So we start off inside a crypt. You awaken on a cold slab of stone. Moonlight dimly illuminates the room. You can barely see your surroundings. You quickly find the door and the link is now exit the crypt, leading to the outside. Here we have the outside. Outside the crypt. You are outside of the crypt in the middle of a cemetery. You cannot open the door. You see a fountain to the north, leading to the fountain. The cemetery gate is to the east, leading to the gate. An old bench lies to the south, leading to the bench. And a path runs to the west, leading to the path. Now, I like to keep all of these things available on a separate text file, so I can just copy and paste them. It keeps the descriptions consistent throughout the game. So, we'll just go in clockwise formation. Let's start by going up to the fountain. A fountain. In front of you is a dried-out fountain with a statue of the Grim Reaper. Many graves spread out to the east, going to the graves, and you see a silhouette to the west, which will lead to the grave digger. And the crypt lies to the south, going back to the outside of the crypt passage. So we move to the graves. There are a row of graves spread out before you. You notice an open grave with a shovel near it. This is kind of hinting at the item that we will later add in that you can take. And in fact, we will change this text depending on whether or not you pick up the shovel and have it when you enter this passage. And then, of course, you have the cemetery gate to the south and a fountain to the west. Moving down to the gate, the cemetery gate, the gate to the cemetery is closed and will not budge. There must be a mechanism to open it somewhere. Later, when we do styling, we will make this italic to imply that it is a hint to the player. Many graves spread out to the north. You see a light in the windows of a small cottage to the south. The crypt lies to the west. Go down to the cottage. Light shines through the windows of the grave digger's dilapidated home. The door is locked shut. Again, just like the shovel, we will make this change depending on whether or not you get the key from the grave digger. The cemetery gate is to the north, and an old bench lies to the west. Go to the bench, a quiet bench, an old bench sits in front of you. The crypt lies to the north, you see light in the windows of a small cottage to the east, you notice a hill rising to the west. Go into the hill, the hilltop. From the top of this small hill you can see a dark shape far to the north. A crypt and many graves are to the northeast. Far to the east you can see light coming from a small building. I thought this would be a nice little touch, whereas most of the links tell you what is in the next area adjacent to the current one, I felt that if you were going to climb a hilltop, you should be able to see all across the map and all the different little landmarks, as it were, in each of them. So a path runs to the north, and an old bench lies to the east. We then go to the path, a lonely path. You are on an empty path, surrounded by graves. You see a silhouette to the north, leading to the grave digger. The crypt lies to the east and you notice a hill rising to the south. And then finally the grave digger, a creepy grave digger. There is a strange man muttering to himself as he looks out over the graves. You are too scared to approach him. He appears to have an old key dangling from his belt. Again, just like the shovel and the locked door, we will make this change depending on player interaction. So you see a fountain to the east and a path runs to the south. So hopefully you have everything connected and some nice descriptions. In the next episode, we will make some fancier interactive text and start preparing for the item collection and usage mechanics in the game.